I see you wearing your green shirt again, Carl. Hell yeah, I am, Brad. You know what that does to the green screen. Also, because we're talking about something that's quite fabulous today, and Barbie, why don't we make today's video a nice shade of hot pink? <laughs> For decades, Mattel has struggled to sell Ken dolls to little girls who've repeatedly explained to baffled executives that they simply don't find the character cool. When Mattel tried to address this in the early 90s, they inadvertently made Ken look super gay much to the amusement of the gay community. Dubbed Earring Magic Ken, this Ken doll was Mattel's attempt to reinvent the character's look after sales data indicated nobody gave all that much of a shit about him. It doesn't bother you that on your own box, your name is eight times smaller than Barbie's? Next question. The story goes, in the early 90s, Mattel got kind of desperate when they realized that little girls weren't buying or playing with Ken dolls, despite an aggressive marketing campaign pitching Ken as Barbie's boyfriend. Better fix Ken's sandwich. <laughs> Which, Brad, kind of makes sense if you think about it, doesn't it? Like, if you're a little girl or a little boy playing with a Barbie doll, and he's like, oh, who does Barbie want to date? Why would you pick a loser like Ken, who doesn't even have opposable limbs, when you could raid your brother's toy box and make her date Cobra Commander or Action Man? Action you, you put Ken next to Action Man, that's basically that meme of, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. Not only is Action Man fully poseable, he's super buff, he's good with animals, he's got his own helicopter, he's got his own secret base, he can parachute, he can scuba dive, he saves the world on a regular basis, he's got that awesome four-wheel drive car with a missile launcher in the engine, and then what's Ken got? Nothing. He can't even move properly. <laughs> I'll be honest, when I was a kid, I did used to take my little sister's Barbie and sit in the Action Man Jeep next to Action Man. Just so Action Man was like, yeah. yeah. Or she'd be driving, he'd be manning the gun. <laughs> Barbie Ken, Ken my six. So what was Mattel's plan to deal with low Ken sales? Well, the original plan was like, maybe replace Ken with like a different doll. And they did a survey of young girls asking like, in a not too subtle way, like, would you like buy a different male doll? to play with your Barbie. And like, by proxy asking if Barbie should just dump Ken's ass. <laughs> and the little girl said, no, we like Ken. We just wish he looked a little cooler. The problem for Mattel executives though, is that apparently no one in their office knew what cool people look like. So how did they remedy this? Well, I need to point out that Mattel have denied that this is the case, but the oft repeated rumor is that they paid someone to do research, which involved going to a lot of raves. I need to mention, like, Mattel have categorically denied that this is what they did. They did not send researchers to raves to see what young, hip people dress like. Something I like to counter by, again, motioning towards this image of Earring Magic Ken and asking you, the audience, doesn't Ken look like he'd fit right in with a bunch of people wearing mesh shirts, throwing shapes in a warehouse playing thumping techno music? What in particular is gay about Ken's outfit? Well, a lot of gay commenters pointed to the necklace worn by Ken as being particularly gay. Why? What Ken is wearing around his neck is very clearly a cock ring. <laughs> Why would he be wearing a cock ring? Well, this is what lends credence to the theory that Mattel sent researchers to a bunch of raves. Because, you see, the current on vogue thing for gay people to do in the rave scene in the 90s around the offices that Mattel were based at, was to wear a cock ring on their person. And uh, you could even subtly indicate the kind of stuff you were into in the bedroom based on where on your person this cock ring was located. Before long, it became the go-to fashion accessory for people in the LBGT community. So the thinking is that obviously, someone that Mattel sent to research these raves just saw a bunch of shredder dudes wearing cock rings around their neck, assumed it was just some cool fashion accessory a lot of people wore those days, not realising what it was actually intended for, and decided to give Ken one too. So at the time, the ring was a way of basically saying, that's the community I belong to. Yeah, basically, and then it became a fashion accessory after that. At first it was like a statement of your sexuality, and then it just became a cool fashion accessory, like the old, like, um, putting a safety pin on your clothes and stuff like that for punk rock. Yeah. I like the idea as well that Mattel denied that they sent someone to do research at a rave when Ken's wearing a lilac mesh shirt and leather vest. <laughs> so, what other situation is that kind of attire relevant for, other than a rave? 
They obviously didn't open up like a catalog. What situation like does a cool person wear a mesh, like a leather vest and a mesh shirt? It's like, other than like, like a wedding for a dog, and I can't think of anything other than like a sick, awesome warehouse rave. <laughs> well, why are you wedding for a dog? I don't know, it seems like you can wear anything there. It's not like the bride's gonna complain, is it? <laughs> so to sum up, the rumor is that Mattel paid a researcher to go to a rave who saw a bunch of shredded gay men wearing a cock ring around their neck, and they assumed it was just some sort of cool accessory that all the kids wore back then. It wasn't. It was a gay thing that made Ken look really gay. Mattel wanted to give Ken a more updated look by frosting his hair, putting him in purple leather, and uh, yeah, gave him a cock ring. Isn't that great? So what happened when Earring Magic Ken hit the shelves? It became the best selling Ken doll of all time. A fact that's all the more impressive when you realise it was only on shelves for six weeks before Mattel got really annoyed about it and discontinued the line, making Earring Magic Ken not only one of the best selling Ken dolls of all time, but also now a highly sought after collector's item. So were little girls buying the dolls they thought it was cool? No, it was mostly bought by adult gay men and women who found the doll funny and were like happy, like, oh wow, wow, some representation for the gay community in one of the most popular toy lines of all time. And a lot of them sent tongue-in-cheek letters to Mattel saying, we love the new more fabulous Ken, we can't wait to see what you do next. And Mattel got really annoyed about this and began sending out stock letters of response saying, Ken straight. You'd think they'd ride that train, like if Ken's suddenly it's, selling it's, out. It's more the fact, like, they couldn't sell Ken, like, when it's like, he's Barbie's boyfriend, and little girl's like, no, I don't want this. The second they make a doll, that people in the gay community go, oh wow, so you dressed him like someone at a rave, gave him a big old cock ring, um, you've dyed his hair so it's blonde, and you made him look all kinds of fabulous, this is awesome, we'll we're gonna clear out every doll that every store has in stock. And Mattel's like, no, no, we don't like it, Ken's straight, we insist that he's straight, because we sell better when people think he's gay. So maybe you should like, when you're looking at your sales numbers and you realize Ken dolls are still hemorrhaging sales, Oh, what's this giant blip in the 90s on this graph? We don't talk about that. This six weeks gap here where the Ken doll was the best selling toy in America. What happened there? We made Ken look gay. Oh, so why aren't we doing that now? Because we got upset because Ken's straight. This guy, this guy right here. Do you know my favourite part about that story is though, Brad? <laughs> the fact that someone at Mattel at that time had to respond to these letters from like gay men and women saying, we're really happy that you've decided to make Ken gay. It's really nice for you as a company to like represent the LBGT community. So they had to send back stock letters of response like, no, Ken's straight. Was there ever an official quote or response from uh, Mattel about this that we know now? Yes, there was. At the time, a writer of the Chicago Reader reached out to Mattel to ask them, so what's going on with Eerie Magic Ken? Is he gay? And they sent a representative called Lisa McKendall and she went to this writer and categorically denied that they made Ken gay and was really, really annoyed about the insinuation that they'd done so. Re like coming out with this amazing quote that I'll share with you all now. From Mattel at the time, we are not in the business of putting cock rings in the hands of little girls. <laughs> what? That's an official quote. You know what this is What? Do you realise the woman who said that surname is McKendall? <laughs> I've never noticed that! What did I put that in the article? <laughs> Damn it! How did I miss that? I was too big, I was blinded by my earring magic Ken's just aura of swagger to notice that the lady who came out with the like that quote, we're not we're not in the business of putting cock rings in the hands of little girls about earring magic Ken, was called Lisa McKendall. Damn it, Brad! <laughs> Annoyed about all the column inches this new, more fabulous Ken was getting, Mattel quietly discontinued Earring Magic Ken, inadvertently making it even more popular, because now, in addition to being known as the Gay Ken, it was now a highly sought after collector's item. And to this day, Mattel is still salty about the fact that this doll was amongst the best selling they've ever made, and they still refuse to release sales data about just how many people bought. This is presumably so they don't have to admit that Ken was more popular when everybody thought he liked fucking dudes. Is it bad that I kind of want one of these Ken dolls? It's so hilarious. It's fucking amazing. The idea that they made it and they didn't realise. Like, nobody in marketing research looked at it and went, why is he wearing a mesh shirt? That's the one that gets me, like, the, the cock ring thing, yeah, you can see, like, 
oh, it's a cool pendant, like men wear jewellery now, jewellery's cool. I get that. The earring, people wear jewellery, that's cool. The dyed hair, I get that. But the mesh shirt is the one that really gets like, no one ever wears mesh shirts unless they're like clubbing. That's what really gets me about it. Like every other aspect of it, you can kind of like write off as like someone just not knowing. But when he's wearing like a leather vest and like the lilac mesh, like, no one has ever worn that outfit in public ever. What did they do? Like if they didn't research at raves, I don't know where they did. Since we're talking about toys in this video, have I ever told the story of my big spiky dinosaur? I don't think so. Oh man, oh, when I was a kid, I had a toy Ankylosaurus, and this was my favourite toy because it was like this big, it was like a foot long, it had a giant tail, and I used to spin it around like a mace. I was a dickhead. Whenever my older brother annoyed me, because obviously if I beat him in Mario Kart, he punched me in the arm, or he like pushed me over, or changed the TV channel, I'd go get my big spiky dinosaur, and I would walk down like a character out of For Honor, spinning it above me, and I'd just whack him around with it, and leave these awful bruises down his arm. Because obviously, the Ankylosaurus was made, it was like covered in spikes, and mine was like solid rubber plastic cement, or whatever it is they made dinosaurs back out of there, and it weighed like a kilo. And my dad got really annoyed about my old brother complaining about it, and, but when he took the toy away from me, I'd get really upset. So my dad's idea of a compromise was, when I was at school one day, he took the Ankylosaurus, my big spiky dinosaur, into the shed, put it in a vise, got a hacksaw, and individually sawed off every single one of its spikes, and then sanded them down. So instead of my big spiky dinosaur, I had my big bumpy bumbling piece of shit. The big knobbly dinosaur. <laughs> and when it, but the thing is though, the spikes hurt, but they left bruises. When it had the bubbles on it, I could beat my brother with it and it wouldn't leave any marks off. <laughs> so I could still hit him with it and it still hurt like hell, but it didn't have spikes on it so it didn't hurt as much. So when I come in, it was on the kitchen table and I went, what happened to my dinosaur? Because I called it, because it's my big spiky dinosaur. That's all I called it. And I went, Where are all these spikes? And my dad had them in like a bag. And I cut them all off, son. And don't worry, I sanded them down so it won't get you in the eye anymore. Because <laughs> my dad had this weird obsession where any time you did anything dangerous, it'd take your eye out. It didn't matter what it was, and he'd come up with some weird, convoluted, like, series of events that'd happen to take your eye out. It's like, don't play with that big spiky dinosaur, son, you'll have your eye out. And I'm like, how am I supposed to take my eye out with this? The dinosaur's like this big. He goes, yeah, but one of the spikes could fly off and hit you in the eye. It's like, don't play like um, PlayStation that close at TV. You could have your eye out. How? The TV might fall over and a bit of glass could fly and hit you in the eyes. It was like that. <laughs> the thing that always cracks me up, obviously I was upset at the time as a kid, but as an adult, I can just picture my dad, like someone looking over our garden fence and seeing him with a toy dinosaur in a vice, just cutting its, saw, its spikes off with a hacksaw and then just lovingly sanding each one down to a perfect nub.